steadfast in the apostles, doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed it were together, and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to look at a little bit uh, verse 46 to 47 to help us get a full understanding of what God is doing at this moment and what God desires to do through us as we continue forward. I grew up in a church, and when I was young, I was five and six years old, a blue church bus would pull up, and my mother would wake us up and get us on that church bus. Sometimes I didn't want to go. But, so I had been in church all my life. But when I dedicated my life to Christ, it was in somebody's front room. It was in a small house, and it was a house Bible study. Now, preceding this, I had been shot and all kind of other stuff going on in my life and going to church. And I went to a small group gathering in the house. And at that time, I had already been baptized in the church, already said the three yeses, yeses, yes. Do you love Christ? Yes. Did he die on the cross for your sins? Yes. Are you committed to his life? Yes, yes, yes. I just knew three yeses. So anyway, I was saved at an early age, so to speak, but I didn't become serious about God until I was a teenager. And when that light came on, it has never gone out. And so I know through personal experience, meeting together in a casual setting, Meeting together in a home environment is explosive. Amen. It is powerful. It is life-changing. And so I'm deeply passionate about this type of gathering, this type of get-together. And this is where we are. Now, I don't want you to lose concept that once we get the big cathedral, if yeah. you will, and there's high volumes of individuals coming to worship, that this phase is in. See, this phase here... Is not to end. This is really church. This fellowshipping, this gathering, this coming together, this meeting people where they are. Now, I talk about five aspects of growth, five aspects of maturity in the church. Now, and this is the way I see it. We start with the world, but I call that chaos. Somebody say chaos. chaos. So you start with chaos. That's the world who does not know Christ who does not have vision, does not have direction, they do not have the salt, that's chaos. And then we bring them near us. And some people call that the crowd, but I call it cosmos. Chaos is a lack of order. Cosmos is when everything is settled and there's some order in place. And so we bring people from the world and we produce a crowd. And in that crowd, we allow them to experience the peace of God. We allow them to experience the revelation of God. And that produces, I believe, cosmos in their life. Cosmos in their mind. When you can't get your finances together, that's chaos. You can't pay your bills, that's chaos. And then you come into the presence of God, and you allow God to begin to permeate your mind, permeate your heart, kind of get some things together. Now, all of a sudden, you're not only paying your tithes, but all your other finances are in order. That's cosmos. And so... It is our task. It is our responsibility as people of God to create atmospheres so individuals can experience cosmos. Because they have chaos. Every day, day in and day out, they have chaos. Trying to get right, trying to find a direction in life. And so it's our job to bring them in. But that's the first level of bringing them in. Now, in my vision, that God has given, one of the most explosive ways we see bringing individuals in, that's why we read Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, it says, and they continue daily with one accord in the temple. That's one aspect. And then it goes on and says, breaking bread from house to house. Let God develop you. Jason has opened up his home today. I'd like to see five people between now and 
And at the beginning of next year, commit to say, you know what? I'm going to open up my home on Tuesday night. <laughs> at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night, we're going to have coffee and cookies or uh, stuffed rice. And we're going to allow not only my family to come in, we're going to allow our neighbors to come in, and we're going to allow them to experience cosmos. We're going to allow them to experience what it's like to be around the people of God. And we'll have a quick lesson, 15, 20 minutes. Because it's not about the lesson. It's about experiencing the cosmos. And it's up to us to create multiple environments for individuals to be able to come in, come out of chaos, and be able to experience a little bit of cosmos. And then what happens from there, then they go a little bit deeper. They started in chaos, they experienced cosmos, and now they become a part of the congregation. 